Hello again. I'm back with another clock to repair. And this one is a New Haven alarm clock. I located it at an antique store. Uh, the guy selling it said that it was a working clock, but we plugged it in and it wasn't working. And uh, in fact, I told him that if it was working, I wasn't interested in it. What I liked about it is that it's a metal case and it has what to me looks like an Art Deco design. This is the first New Haven clock that I've come across, so it'll be something new for me to work on. I did some research on the company and learned that it was first organized in 1853, and then they built what became a very large factory. Uh, it was built from 1866 to 1937. It ended up being a series of 10 interconnected buildings, uh, a very large complex, and it operated until 1956. I know that the early clocks they made were all mostly wind-ups, and I don't know when they started to make electric clocks, but for something that is an Art Deco design, I'm guessing this could be somewhere in the 1940s. What was interesting to me when I turned the clock around is that this is not a self-starting clock. There's a knob here with an arrow of which way to turn it to get it to start, and when I turn that arrow, I'll show you what happens. There's a small little arrow in a window in the dial here. And when you turn it and let go, you can, you can see these little arrows spinning. And this, I believe, shows the seconds. There's the minute hand and hour hand and a small alarm set arm, which uh, you use to set what time you want the alarm to go off. But as far as the seconds going, they're only going to be visible through this little window here. The case itself is in pretty good condition with the exception of the top of it which has some paint that has kind of peeled off or rubbed off on that part of the clock case. The back of it is in good shape and what I'm seeing is several screws holding this back plate to the case and I'll look to get set up and we'll take those out first and see how things go. Just to show you some of the detail on the back of this clock, this is the knob I was talking about. It says turn and release for the starter. This is the knob to set the, uh, it says handset. We have a knob for the alarm set. And what's interesting is this one says auxiliary, uh, auxiliary, whew, wow. <laughs> Just to show you a, a bit of a close-up on the features on the back of this clock, this is the start knob. This knob is to set the hands. A knob to set the alarm. And that can only be turned one way, apparently. And then what's interesting is an auxiliary alarm wind knob. And I'm not sure why it says auxiliary, but if I wind it up, and then flip the switch from silent to alarm. I think if I turn the hands enough, it'll go off. Oh, I have it set at 11. So although the clock seems to be electric, I'm thinking that the alarm is the old school wind-up type. Now, before I remove these screws to get the plate off, I have to remove these knobs. And because the alarm set can only turn one way, I'm hoping that if I rotate it the other way, it'll unscrew. So, that worked. So let's see if I get lucky with this one. Now, because this handset knob lets me turn the hands either way, I'm not really unscrewing it, but I'm hoping that the hole behind it is the same diameter as the knob. So I'm going to go ahead now and undo these screws and uh, look to get the back off. I've removed the first few screws. This particular one I'm turning, but it doesn't seem to want to come out. I have two left over here. And this one on the bottom. 
And I'm not sure what that screw is for, but let's see if I can lift this up. Okay. So this screw should come out. Uh, let me put this back in. Try turning it some more. It almost feels like it's getting tighter. Very strange. Yep. Oh, it did come out. Okay. This, there's a screw down here I missed. All right. Back to the drawing board here. One more. There we go. So these screws seem to be attached to these rubber, rubber grommets or spacers and apparently they don't come out from this okay all right let me take a closer look at all of this and I'll figure out how I want to approach it we'll put this aside for the moment and the glass and the case Now that I have it open, let me plug it in and see if it still doesn't work. And I have to give the little start knob a spin. Well, I believe it's running. Can you see the second hand indicator moving interesting and on the back you can see the oh it just stopped how about that okay so now we have an intermittent clock All right, so it's sort of running, which is why I guess the owner initially thought it was a running clock. But whether the gears have to be cleaned and lubricated to make sure that it doesn't stop every now and then, that's a possibility. So my next step is gonna to be to look to open everything up. But what I like to do first is remove the hands. So let me get set up to do that. I need to take a closer look. Odds are these are friction grip hands. I should be able to easily pry them off. <clears throat> oh my God, this is recording now. I've just realized the most obvious reason it's not running is as I rotated this whole clock mechanism one of the wires came out from the coil. So now I have to undo the wrapping on it. You know what, look at that, both wires have come. <laughs> both wires broke away from the coil. So that will be uh, a challenge to repair a coil. Okay, next step is gonna be just to totally take this apart and get the coil out of here. And I'll start by removing the hands. These are most likely friction grip. They should come off pretty easily. Let me get to work on that. Just try to pry it off a little bit. And it's feeling rather tight. It's really quite tight. What I'm going to do is put a little bit of WD-40 on here, let it soak in for a few minutes, and then try again. 
I just spray a little into a cap and then with a brush apply it just a little bit. Okay, we'll give that a few minutes. Okay, we'll try again. This is very tight. It may take me a while to get it off. I'm not gonna waste a lot of time having you watch me pry gently with a screwdriver. So let me work on it some more. Once I have it off, we'll continue. Okay, I finally got the hands off. And with the exception of the alarm set hand, these two were the most difficult hands I've ever come across trying to take off a clock. I was fortunate that I didn't bend these but they were really, really tight. Anyway, next, let's see about removing the dial. There's two little metal tabs here that are bent to hold it in place. Okay. Quite a bit of oil under here. It's gonna to have to be cleaned up. And let's see, I see three screws on this plate. And I think taking that off is gonna access the gears. And I think I have to work my way backwards in order to get to where the coil is. See what happens when I try to peel off the tape here. Oh, I see wires. Okay, save that for now. Let's start at the front. When taking these apart, I'm always looking to minimize the chance of my disturbing gears so that I lose track of how they're positioned. And it looks to me that once these three screws come out and this plate comes off, there are three posts here that the screws go into, which I think will keep this next plate in position. So the gears shouldn't be moving much. And I'm also seeing on the other side, what looks like some threaded posts here. And I think if I remove these, I might be able to get the whole coil assembly off of here. The only part I might have to undo is the set knob. And I see it has a slot on the side of it. So this is a friction grip one. I can probably just pull this one off. So I'll start with these screws, as I previously mentioned, and then probably give these two a shot. And once I have these out, I'll continue. I've removed the three screws from here. And what I'm seeing is there seems to be a clip holding this whole gear assembly to the plate. And when I try to lift it up, it's really not coming. It's attaching the gear underneath it. So this isn't coming out. So what I'm gonna do is put the screws back in here and see what happens when I undo this side. Okay, let's see what happens when I try to lift this out of here. All right, I got it. A couple of washers here. So what I get to focus on next is I'm gonna to try to unwrap the coil, see if I can locate the wires in here and hopefully figure out a way to re-solder these wires back to the coil. So that'll take a little bit of time. Once I get this all cleaned up and removed, I'll continue. 
I've been working on the coil now for quite a while. I removed the tape that was covering it, and I removed the uh, sort of a paper wrap around it as well. I was able to expose the wires. I'll try to show them to you. There's a small one right over here on the corner, and the longer one you can see here. And although in the past I've had success repairing coils by tinning these wires with some solder and then soldering a new power cord to it, I've had no luck doing that with this one. <clears throat> the other concern is most of the, not most, but all the other ones I've seen, the coils are attached to these plates by screws and nuts. This one is riveted in place, so I'm unable to remove it if I was to actually come up with another one to replace it with. So for me, it looks like unless I can find a similar clock to, to take parts from, <clears throat> this one is going to be an unsuccessful repair.